Hi all, I have a very interesting greedy game to show you from TSEC Season 13 Division 3 Round 27, Padone against Arazan. So Leela fans were hoping that Arazan could be held at bay in this game. Uh, and let's see what happened. E4 from Padone. Arazan played the Scandinavian. This is the set book given to both. After Knight C3, uh, usually Queen A5, or Queen D8, for example. But here, Arazan improvises, it seems, uh, with the, the interesting Queen E6 check, which I believe Limz Nimzovich was very scornful of, generally, in particular the Scandinavian in the way it's been played here. Because after Bishop E2, the idea is Queen G6. That's revealed. Now, uh, this is very interesting uh, for developments, uh, peace developments in particular. If white plays bishop f3, this might not be the most optimal approach to hold g2. This didn't happen. For example, e5 here, knight c6, black could actually offer a kind of gambit with actually reasonable compensation. This position, because black has a nice d4 square control and black has the peace pressure. No, white actually maximizes peace development here by playing knight f3, offering a gambit of the g2 pawn, which Arazan actually takes. At this point, it's actually getting already quite difficult. If knight c6, then knight b5 is really annoying. Uh, if the king has to move, then white's clearly better. So that's really annoying. So queen takes g2 is played, and we have um, a real lead in development. Uh, so after rook g3, queen goes back to d7. So Nimzovich will be horrified. He really talked about this early in uh, his book, My System, uh, how <laughs> development in the opening is very important and gave the Scandinavian as an example, this particular kind of bad Scandinavian continuation. d4 was played and <laughs> Razan plays queen d8. So this is, yeah, one of the top leading engines in the tournament is playing black here and <laughs> doesn't seem to have valued uh, peace development versus the extra pawn. So this is an example of extreme greed. Uh, you can look at my pinned comments for the uh, analysis notes, uh, interactive analysis notes. If knight f6, leaving the queen on d7, then lo and behold, knight e5, bishop c4 anyway hitting f7 this kind of position is going to be nice for white in any case uh, so yeah e6 again you know knight e5 bishop g5 this kind of thing is entertaining after bishop e5 check check black can actually get slaughtered like this for example uh, this is just absolute slaughter for example here rook f7 knight d6 check these are some example variations uh, c6 so leaving the queen there again, knight e5. This position, you might think, but actually knight g6 hits the queen and protects f4. And this is just nasty here. This is very good. For example, here, just to show you some nightmare scenarios where actually rook e3 comes in handy, pinning, handy pinning, pinning the queen against the king. So these variations demonstrate black has some issues here behind the scenes. So queen d8. <laughs> Now we have knight e5 anyway, knight f6, bishop c4, which closes in that bishop now. Bishop e3, which prepares the castle queen side. Knight bd7, queen f3, which puts pressure again on the f on f7. We have knight b6 here, bishop d3. And then the move h6, you might wonder, well, why h6? Another poor move. I thought black was creaking here after h6, observing this game. Well, if the bishop moves, clearly white could just play on take on g7. If knight bd5, this position, knight e4, this is just really powerful for white castling queenside. And if black tries to castle queenside, it's too little, too late. Knight takes d7, queen takes f6, really nasty for black. So uh, yeah, it's all pretty nasty. So h6, white castles queenside, knight bd7, rook dg1. So this kind of really uh, emphasizes, underlines that it doesn't matter how strong how strong a chess engine is, if it gets a bad 
opening position. And even this year, if we get bad opening positions, we don't actually demonstrate our playing style or our abilities. We just sometimes just it's just really, really bad, and we can't recover from it. That might be the case here. Black played another poor move, g5. The reason is these rooks are not just pretty; they're functional. After c6, white could just crash through anyway. With rook takes g7. Here, for example, rook f8, knight takes f7, and bishop g6 is really nasty. This is absolutely crushing. So g5, maybe in view of trying to do the best thing possible uh, here. So g5. Uh, also, by the way, if we just look at this one moment more uh, in this line with c6, uh, you might think, hold on a sec, queen e7. Let's have a look at queen e7. Just bishop g6 here. And then knight e5 is check. Yeah, it's absolute devastation. Devastation, as you can imagine. So uh, we have g5, and now just h4. G4 was played. If g takes h4 here, then actually strong is knight takes f7. Yeah, hitting the queen, and then actually rook g6. This is really the most accurate way to punish Black's position. Believe it or not, with that pin on f6. For example, here knight b5 is really awkward. Uh, like that's just easily winning for white. And if white ignores that after knight b5 with c6, then white builds up the pressure now. Black's just paralyzed here. Uh, this kind of continuation is just really amusing uh, to check out. So bishop g8 here is crushing after check and checkmate as an example. So there's real devastation going on behind the scenes here. So g4, knight takes g4 was played. Uh, h5. Yeah, again, if if knight takes g4, I mean this is all pretty bad. Rook takes here. Rook f4 is nice. For example, here rook takes f7, and we're getting a lesson in tactics and pins and stuff after bishop g6. So uh, yeah, so knight takes g4. We have h5. Knight takes, queen takes. The queen does drop back. A bit of respite for black. Uh, but it vacates f3. <laughs> so f7 is in trouble. c6, rook f3. And now black plays another greedy move. Queen takes h4. If queen e7, guess what? Again, our lesson in pins continues here. What does white play here? <laughs> rook takes f7 is really strong. For example, king takes, this is just uh, checkmating. And uh, if queen takes, uh, then there's bishop g6. Yes, yeah, so what, does, what does black actually do? If, if queen b4, then bishop g5 is fun. After takes, check. Uh, queen takes, check. And this is like mating. So it's all great fun here now. So queen takes h4, but now bishop g5. And guess what here? Black played rook g8, offering the queen. If queen takes, can you see a nice tactic for white? You might have seen this in a quick Alakine game. It's a nice tactical idea. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, can you see it? Okay, <laughs> queen takes e6 check. Yes, and I did notice this during the live stream myself that this tactic was on. Bishop g6 is checkmate. So rook g8 just giving up the queen. That's taken. And here, thankfully for black, it's adjudicated as a win for, for white. No more suffering after knight retreat. I just thought this was a really amusing game and it gave Leela fans hope in the story of, of this uh, epic. Division three, so yeah, Horizon. I'm sorry to say this. No, it's unfair. It's <laughs> if you get a bad position from the opening, then even you know everyone suffers. We we can't show our abilities, and that was the case there. Horizon actually overall had a fantastic tournament, and credit to the engine writer who apparently has been working on Arazan for many, many years. But it just it was embarrassed in this game just because of the opening sequence, to be fair. So uh, 
but it's a lesson in greed as well in the opening I believe so I thought I'd share this one hope you enjoyed it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much